Hi, let's talk about the nerves of the orbit. So what you're looking at here is the left side of the middle cranial fossa. So along this ridge is the petrous portion of the temporal bone. What we can see here is the trigeminal nerve moving under the dura, which has been stripped away, and you can see the ophthalmic nerve, or V1, the maxillary nerve, or V2, and the mandibular nerve, or V3. In today's dissection, we are only concerned of these three branches with V1, the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve, which is entirely sensory. We're also able to see cranial nerve 6, which is the abducent, heading out toward the lateral rectus muscle. So the abducens abducts the eye. We can also see just anterior to that the trochlear nerve or cranial nerve 4, which innervates the superior oblique muscle. And then finally, this large nerve here is the oculomotor nerve, cranial nerve 3. And then just medial to cranial nerve 3, we can see the, uh, the left internal carotid artery heading up towards the, uh, the brain. So now we are flipping over to the, uh, the right orbit with the, uh, the orbital roof removed. And let's see what, uh, what can be seen here. Um, probably one of the, uh, the more uh, conspicuous um, structures that, uh, that will jump out at you is uh, the frontal nerve of V1. That frontal nerve I'm tracing here. And it's sitting kind of in the middle of the orbit. It's one of the more uh, superior large structures. You can see this, uh, this frontal nerve is going to branch into the supraorbital laterally and supratrochlear medially nerves. So the, uh, the supratrochlear nerve is going to uh, be afferent to the skin of the medial forehead and uh, the upper eyelid, whereas the supraorbital uh, nerve is going to be afferent to the skin of the forehead, a lot of the forehead, as well as afferent from the, uh, the mucosa of the frontal sinus. We can also see um, just medial to the frontal nerve here, going towards the superior oblique muscle to innervate it, cranial nerve for the, uh, the trochlear nerve. And you can see that right here. So that's trochlear, that's frontal, and then a, uh, another branch of V1, so frontal is V1, another branch of V1 that we can see is the lacrimal nerve. The lacrimal nerve heads out towards the lacrimal gland and it's going to be afferent uh, from the skin of the lateral upper eye and uh, associated conjunctiva. The third major branch of V1, uh, nasociliary, is going to be deep. So we'll have to uh, we'll have to reflect levator, palpebri superioris, and superior rectus in order to uh, to see this nerve. So let's let's see what we can accomplish there. So here you have the uh, those muscles reflected, and the orbit has been uh, cleared out of its associated fat. Um, and you can see 
Here is the nasociliary nerve. And that nasociliary nerve takes a, a couple of branches. So as we move anteriorly along here, we have the posterior ethmoidal nerve and then the anterior ethmoidal nerve. Uh, these are exiting the, uh, the orbit through the posterior and anterior ethmoidal foramina, respectively. And uh, these are innervating the, uh, the mucosa. They're afferent from the mucosa of the ethmoidal cells. Um, and the posterior ethmoidal also is afferent from the mucosa of the uh, sphenoidal sinus as well. And then the continuation here of the nasociliary, so this branch right there, is known as the, uh, the infratrochlear. The infratrochlear nerve is going to be afferent from the skin and mucosa of the medial uh, eyelids, as well as the, uh, the skin of the, the lateral nose. Finally here, rounding out uh, the nasociliary, are going to be the long ciliary nerves. And you'll notice that some of these branches of the long ciliary nerves are going directly to the globe of the eye. And some of them are branching out over here, eventually going to connect with the ciliary ganglion, which you can see that I've just uh, circled. It's right there. That ciliary ganglion is generally um, inferior to the, uh, the optic nerve. Uh, about midway through the orbit, sometimes a little lateral to it as well. Anyhow, returning back to our long ciliary nerves, uh, these are afferent from the eye themselves, and they also conduct some uh, postganglionic sympathetic fibers uh, to the dilator pupillae of the eye. So uh, a sympathetic uh, stimulation of the dilator pupillae muscle is going to cause the pupil to dilate, as the, uh, the muscle name would, would suggest. So let me clear this up a little. Um, and we could return here to this ciliary ganglion. The ciliary ganglion is a parasympathetic ganglion. The um, the preganglionic parasympathetics are coming from the oculomotor nerve, and then the postganglionic parasympathetics are being conducted via the short ciliary nerve. So the short ciliary nerves are the nerves that span the distance between the ciliary ganglion and the eye. Now, these short ciliary nerves are conducting quite a few different types of fibers. Um, they're carrying uh, afferent fibers from the eye through the ciliary ganglia back to the long uh, ciliary nerves. Uh, they're also um, conducting uh, postganglionic parasympathetic fibers. The, the preganglionics are coming from three. Once they hit that ciliary ganglion, uh, the postganglionic parasympathetic fibers are going to sphincter pupillae muscles and ciliary muscles. Uh, the sphincter pupillae muscles are, are going to, uh, to narrow the pupils, so the pupils will constrict. Um, and the ciliary muscles are important for accommodation of the lens. And then finally, these short ciliary nerves are going to conduct uh, postganglionic sympathetic fibers. Uh, these fibers are in part coming from the perivascular plexuses um, about the orbit, and uh, those postganglionic sympathetic fibers are heading toward uh, the smooth muscles of the intraocular vessels of the eye. So that's, that's quite a bit. Um, and I would be remiss if I, I didn't point out uh, cranial nerve 2 here. That would be the optic nerve. So you can, um, you can actually create a transverse section of the, uh, the optic nerve, which we'll, we'll see uh, briefly. But that is an afferent nerve uh, returning uh, special sense vision uh, from the, the retina of the eye. 
We also here have the opportunity of seeing uh, a little bit more of oculomotor, in particular uh, part of the inferior division of oculomotor is, is peeking out here. Uh, we also have a little bit of the superior division heading that way. So these fibers are, are rather advantageous heading out towards their uh, respective uh, extraocular muscle. And a little more conspicuous uh, is the abducens, cranial nerve 7, on the way out to lateral rectus muscle, which we can see there. And I know that this is all being included, so let me circle abducens and the lateral rectus. So the abducens abducts the eye by making the lateral rectus um, contract. And then finally, returning back to uh, the optic nerve, cranial nerve 2, we have the uh, ability of, once we've enucleated the globe of the eye, to uh, take a look at uh, a posterior view. So this is a posterior view of the globe of the eye with what I've circled, the, uh, the optic nerve being transmitted to and from it. And bundled within the optic nerve here, we can see an ophthalmic artery supplying the, uh, the retina of the eye with blood. So thank you for your time.